Today's demonstration is going to go through the new product app offerings on the 3D Experience platform, XDesign and XShape. Now the 3D Experience platform is a single, complete, collaborative product development environment that is cloud-based. So these are two separate applications within that cloud platform. XDesign is part of the 3D creator role. It's a web-based 3D prismatic modeling tool. So this is a you know, traditional parametric modeling application, very similar to something like you would see with SolidWorks. XShape is also a different app on the 3D Experience platform that's given with the 3D Sculptor role. And it's a web-based, more free-form modeling application. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we get through the demonstration. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna go through part modeling, then bring it into an assembly, and then we'll also look at the freeform design. So bringing it back, this part modeling and assembly modeling, I'm gonna use the XDesign app, and then for the freeform design, I'm gonna use XShape. All of these can be switched back and forth and work seamlessly within the 3D Experience online platform. Today's demonstration, I'm gonna use this uh, computer monitor stand and we're going to go through the part modeling application first. So let me go ahead and switch over to the platform. So here we see the 3D Experience platform web based application for XDesign. Now I've already got this monitor stand assembly open and as I said we're going to walk through an initial new part creation using XDesign first, and then we'll eventually come back to the assembly and also use the freeform design application XShape. Before I move into a new component design, I wanted to familiarize you with the interface and the environment a little bit. I have my design manager over on the left showing me the components that I've added to the assembly. At the bottom, I have all my tools and features that are separated by context. So I have sketch tools, surfacing tools, um, some life cycle management tools, assembly environment tools. I, of course, have the graphics that you can scroll around like any other CAD modeling software. And this chair in the upper right, you can use to navigate your view orientation. I'm gonna double click on these top toolbar here. I have different applications listed on my dashboard and the application XDesign is open. I'm gonna double click and start on my new product design file. I'll double click to activate this new window and I'm ready to begin my design. Very similar to the assembly environment, I have my feature tree on the left that will show the features as I build my CAD file and I have all my modeling tools and features down here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a sketch on the top plane. I'll select the plane, select the sketch icon, and I can take advantage of my sketch tools down here at the bottom to draw my two initial circles. To define them, I'll use my Smart Dimension tool and indicate that the larger or outer one is 50 millimeters and the inside is going to be 35. Notice how the sketch circles are changing color as I add definition. They have a location and they also have a magnitude. So they change to black indicating that those sketch circles are fully defined or fully constrained. From here, I can come to my features tab and select the add material or extrude command. So I'm gonna be keep, keeping symmetry in my design. I'm gonna go ahead and select a mid chain extrusion and the magnitude or the height of this will be 50 millimeters. Go ahead and hit enter, or you can hit the green check to confirm. And to start a new sketch, I'm gonna jump straight into my sketch tab, select a new circle, and then pick the top plane to sketch on again. For this one, I'll go ahead and draw two more circles, similar to how I did before. Click my dimension tool. The inside of this is going to be 12, and the outside is going to be 20 millimeters. Now, notice I added the two dimensions defining the magnitude of these circles, but I haven't located them relative to either an existing shape or to my origin, so it's still blue. The other way to define sketches in addition to the magnitude or dimensions is by relationships. So to apply one, I'm going to click on the center point of my circles, 
hold the control key and select my origin and apply a horizontal relationship. Now that gives it a location indicating that it's somewhere left to right of that origin and I'll also just give it a magnitude. This is gonna be 50 millimeters. Now to create the rest of this boss, I'm gonna take advantage of the sketches and the geometry that I already have. So instead of creating a circle and applying a, a magnitude that's the same as this one, I'm just gonna select the outer circle and then choose to convert that to a current sketch. Now, if I change the original diameter, this one will also change. That's nice because it can help prevent design mistakes. I'm going to jump into my line tool and I'll create the rest of the geometry for my sketch. So I'm going to click and add a line from this point to this circle. And I'm also going to take advantage of symmetry. So I'm going to say that I want to mirror this line that I'm drawing hit the green check to confirm. Now when I move one, they'll both move together. Now for these, I wanna say that these two items are tangent. So I'm gonna select the point, select the tangent relationship, and then do the same thing for where it comes in to my main boss. I'll say tangent. Now I have overlapping sketch geometries, so I'm just gonna use my trim tool and trim off the axis from both the inside and the outside, so I have just one closed shape profile. As I did before, I'll come into my Features tab, select my Extrude command. I'll use another mid-plane extrusion to keep symmetry, enter in the value, which is 30. Go ahead and green check, and we can see this design coming along. I'm gonna rotate to create a pocket on the underside of this. I'm gonna leave a uniform thickness so I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of the shell command. I'll select this bottom face, enter in thickness that I wanna leave after removing the bottom face, hit the green check, and we can see the shell command applied. Now this is gonna leave me with an undercut on the inside. To show you that, I wanna go ahead and turn on the tools tab and enable a section view. So I'll select the plane that I wanna take a section, and click my section view command. I'm gonna flip the direction and we can see using that section that I've got that undercut around the center of my design. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of that. We need to correct that. To do that, I need to edit that shelf feature and I can actually edit it just by clicking on the face that it was um, made by and click edit feature. Now what I wanna do here to get rid of this I want a five millimeter thickness here, here, and around the circular boss, but I want to enable the advanced custom thickness tab, and around this ID, I want to have a different thickness. I can actually use math here instead of typing in a value, so what I've got is the OD of that with 50 millimeters. I'm going to subtract 35, right arrow, and then divide that by two. That's going to give me the thickness that I need. I can green check and then I see that I no longer have that undercut cut issue. Now, while I'm already in this orientation, I'm also gonna do some of the cosmetic things, make sure nobody has any sharp edges. I'm gonna come back to the Features tab and select Fill It. I'll go ahead and take advantage of this edge. I'll specify the magnitude, which is gonna be one millimeter. And for the rest of these, I can just select this outer edge, Notice I have tangent propagation, so it will wrap all the way around the bottom of that boss. Or I can even use faces. So I'll go ahead and select this face and this face and get the inside of these as well. So I'll select this one, this one, and this one, and then green check to confirm my selections. So one shot, one feature, I was able to get all of the edges filleted. Of course, that was for the same size fillet. Next, I want to create a cut on the ID of this and give it a taper so it can sit down. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch, grab a rectangle tool, and add a rectangle like so. Now, by default, if you notice, after I draw that rectangle, it's applying a relationship um, automatically. So when I click on these, you'll see I've got a perpendicular. I need to get rid of that because I wanna have a taper. 
So I'm just going to click on the relationship, hit the delete key, and then I can add an angle to this. So let me delete this one as well. Now that I've got them both deleted, I can drag this top corner to create the taper. I've got the geometry roughly what I need, and of course I'll come back to my Smart Dimension tool, which is on the Sketch toolbar, to add my dimensions. Now before I add the dimension to this, I also want to add a center line so that I can get a, a diameter rather than a radius. I don't have the other side, so if I try and put this in, I only get a radius option. If I add another sketch entity, like a line, and I don't need to use this for the feature, so I'll click on the line and just say it's for construction. Now, when I try and dimension this, I'll have the option to select my construction line, and even though I don't have the geometry, I can display this dimension as a diameter. The magnitude for this will be 43, and then I also want to add the angle between the center and my angle line here. This value will be 3 degrees. Now on the Features tab for this, I want to show you one of the other powerful tools with X-Design, and that's what Super Feature is. A Super Feature is enacted by clicking on one of your main um, Extrude Revolve features from your Features toolbar. And notice that at the top of this, I'm going to go a little bit more into this Property Manager. The Super Feature allows you to alternate or change this cut between a cut or an additive material proper uh, feature without having to delete and add a new one. So they let you interchange between extrudes, revolves, or sweeps without having to delete and re-add a feature. And I can go back and edit previous extrudes and change them to a cut seamlessly. For here, I'm going to say that I've got a revolve type of feature. Instead of adding material, I want to cut. I've got a solid. I'll pick the axis that I want to revolve my cut around and hit the green check. Now I have my small undercut, my little taper on the ID of the part. I've got one last thing that I want to do, and I want to mirror this body that I have over here. So I'm going to select the plane that I want to mirror about, choose my mirror feature, use the body selection, and mirror this body. The preview will let me know I've got the right selections. I can go ahead and green check that out. I'm done with my new part creation using X-Design. I'm ready to go ahead and switch back to the assembly and replace the existing component with my new monitor stand yoke. X-Design is a powerful part modeling application brought to us on the 3D Experience platform. Again, I hope I've shown that it was very easy to use easy to learn, and we've also got some powerful new features like the super feature functionality that allows us to switch between add and remove and different, different features within the same command. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the assembly environment.